What's up everyone? Today I'm down at Touring Sport and behind me is a 2016 BMW R1200 RS. Huge thanks to them for providing this bike for me today. I'll have all their information down in the description below. The model that we're looking at is finished off in a combination of Lupin Blue and White with an MSRP just over $13,000. This bike comes with a two-cylinder four-stroke boxer engine that is air and liquid cooled, paired only to a six-speed transmission with first gear being all the way down, neutral is halfway between first and second, and then you go up four gears all the way to sixth. This engine produces 125 horsepower at 7,700 RPM and 92 pound-feet of torque at 6,500 RPM. It is belt driven to the rear wheel. It has a dry weight of 520 pounds. Zero to 60 can happen in around five seconds or less. It has a top speed of 125 miles an hour. And with a fuel capacity of 4.7 gallons, you can expect around 57 miles per gallon, depending on how the bike is ridden. The wheelbase measures 60.2 inches. It has an overall length of 86.7 inches. The width is 36.4 inches. It has a height of 49.2 inches and a seat height at 32.3 inches. Starting up front, this bike comes with LED headlights. It also has LED fog lights mounted in the lower side fairings. The front turn signals are mounted just above those. It has an open design to it just under the headlights as well to provide more airflow to the engine. Up front, there's two 320 millimeter floating discs with radial four piston Brembo calipers and ABS. The suspension is a telescopic upside down 45 millimeter fork with wheel travel at 5.5 inches. Moving to the side, this has multi-spoked silver finished aluminum wheels. They measure 17 by 3.7 inches up front and 17 by 5.5 inches in the rear. This has a stainless steel pre-silencer and twin aluminum muffler exhaust system. There's protection bars on each side of the exhaust and this also has saddlebags on each side of the passenger seat. And finishing up in the rear with a single 276 millimeter disc and one double piston floating caliper with ABS. This has a cast aluminum one-sided swing arm the suspension is a motored strut with preload adjustability, rebound, and travel at five and a half inches, and this offers an LED brake light and rear turn signals. Moving on to the gas tank now, it has a nice two-tone finish to it with this silver stripe running down the middle and nice contoured lines on each side. This does have a keyless gas tank fill up, so you just pull this lever all the way up and it will release the tank, which is nice. You don't have to insert a key. This also has a two-piece seat to it. Very large seating for both riders on the bike. Now with the key, we'll go ahead and hop on the bike and turn on all of the electronics. It does feature a key fob, so it does have keyless start. So as long as I have the key fob in proximity to this, I just push on that button to turn on all of the electronics. And you'll see that the speedometer is on the far left. You have your gear selection with your range and odometer right next to that. The clock is on the top. Moving to the right, you have the tachometer, which driving mode that you are in. Your fuel gauge is on the far right, and you have some indicators above that, like neutral, your gas light, and ABS, and things like that. To control the screen, we're gonna move over to the left handlebar. I'm gonna be using the trip and info button along with ABS and the suspension. So on the trip button there, you can see currently under setup, it says enter. We can go to the odometer, trip one, trip two, then clicking on info, you're gonna have your average miles per hour along with the PSI and the tires. You have the date, your oil level, temperature, your engine temperature and range and things like that. Moving over to that suspension button now, we can set it to road or dynamic. So I'll go over those later in the test ride of this video. More controls on the left side. This has cruise control. You have the hazards along with those lower fog lights, blinkers right next to that. And of course the horn is just below that. You have your clutch and one side mirror. Moving over to the right side, again another mirror. You have your front brake. This has heated grips. You have mode buttons for the actual riding conditions like rain, road, dynamic. And then with the engine start and kill switch, we'll just put it down one position. Go ahead and start it up. Now it's time to move on to the storage space on the bike and that is both of the rear saddlebags. I just wanted to show you guys real quick though that there is a key on the key fob itself and you can use this to lock in place any GPS or any monitor that will fit in there. So you have the option to do that. 
This key is also for unlocking and taking these saddlebags off. So you just insert the key here. If you turn it to the left side, you can hit the open release button and open this entire compartment. And with that open now, you can see you have another bag in here for a ton more storage space. You have the same thing on the opposite side. You can remove this bag if you just want the hard shell itself. So you definitely have plenty of room in here for extra clothing, anything like that, going out on a nice cruise on this bike. All right guys, so it's time to get this 1200 RS out on the road now. This is the first upright touring style bike that I've driven. So it's gonna be interesting to see how this compares to a sport bike. This is more for going out on longer cruises. It's a very upright style bike. Something that I did not show though, this also has two kickstand options. So using this far one back here, you can actually get both of the wheels off the ground at the same time. But let's go ahead and hop on. It's pretty different not having to use a key. So I'm just gonna push on that ignition switch, let everything turn on, and then we can start it up here. While I'm sitting at the stoplight right now, we'll just go over the seat height position. I'm 5'10", and I am flat-footed right now on the ground. So while this bike weighs over 500 pounds, it's actually pretty easy to maneuver at slower speeds going around the parking lot and getting to a stoplight like this. So the first thing that I've noticed in riding this bike is how vertical I am sitting. I'm pretty much sitting straight up. I'm not hunched over or anything like on a sport bike. So honestly, it's very comfortable so far. The handlebars aren't too far away. I do feel like I'm stretching out just a little bit to get them. I'm just right up on the, the gas tank here too. But overall, I really like how this is riding so far. You could easily take this out on a couple hundred mile cruises. While this is over 500 pounds, uh, so far I don't feel it. We're gonna get it out on some twisty roads here, but it's definitely a lot heavier than my personal sport bike. And so that's something that I'll just have to get used to here. But I don't see an issue with having a second passenger on here or even filling up both of these saddlebags. Obviously, you just want to make sure you have even weight on both sides. Time to come around a right-hand turn here. Oh, it's so weird being this straight up. It's not crazy windy up here. You do have this wind deflector here, which is quite large. This bike also has the quick shift, which means you don't have to use the clutch to upshift or downshift. So I'm gonna go ahead and go down to fifth gear, fourth gear, third gear. You can roll it even while you're on the throttle there. And then same thing going up in the gears, which makes it a more comfortable and enjoyable bike to ride. You don't have to worry about the clutch if you're going out on some back mountain roads and just cruising. You also have the option to put it into cruise control. So we'll go ahead and set that. You can adjust the speed going plus and minus, obviously faster or slower. Do our clutchless downshifting. I'm so used to grabbing that clutch. And coming around a turn like this, <laughs> it's it, the balance is definitely much different than a sport bike, but that took that turn with ease. I could barely feel the weight of this bike. So as far as the power goes for this bike, we're coming around that same turn. Just give it a little bit of gas here. Wow. Okay, that, that bike gets up and moves. It carries its weight well getting up to the speed limit there. And of course, not using the clutch makes those shifts even quicker. So this bike definitely has plenty of power. And this bike is very comfortable to ride too. I have all my camera gear on my back. If I took those inner linings out of these saddlebags, I'd be able to put my gear in there easy with no problem. But even with my backpack full right now, being able to sit straight up, I'm not gonna have any strain on my back. You can take pretty much a lot of stuff with you out on a cruise. As far as this being a beginner bike, because I just want to address that, I may get that question on this bike. You know, I don't see it being a bad first bike. The only thing I would caution is its dry weight, over 500 pounds. Usually a good beginner bike is gonna be about half the weight of this. So it's just mainly the maneuverability of the bike, even at like parking lot speeds or just moving it around. The good news is that you can be flat footed on the bike, so you don't have to move it around on your tippy toes if you're around 5'8", five, 5'9", five, or taller, which is gonna make it easier to do. But as far as the power in the bike goes, it's definitely something you could start out with. Just doing a third gear pull there around that turn. I mean, it definitely gets up and moves, but it's not like sport bike quick. It carries its speed very well, gets up to speed very quickly, but it, I feel like it doesn't have the same get up and go as a sport bike, and it shouldn't because you know it's designed to be a touring bike. Going over some of these suspension settings now, I've had it in dynamic for most of this test ride, but I just put it over into road now, and I can definitely feel a huge difference 
in this bike absorbing bumps much smoother than going back to dynamic. So I just switched back to dynamic again and you can feel it stiffen up a good bit. The bike also has heated grips too and I accidentally had that on. They work very well on a warm day like today. I don't need them however so it's very easy to turn those two settings on and off just by using the buttons on the right side there. Overall this screen setup is laid out very well. Everything is clear and easy to see. I like how you have the speedometer on the far left. So I think that about wraps up my walk around review and test ride on the 2016 BMW R1200 RS. Huge thanks again to Touring Sport for providing this bike for me today. I will have all their information down in the description below. Overall, I think this is a really fun touring bike to be on. It's comfortable. You could go hundreds of miles on this bike with ease, even having a second person and bring anything that you need with you in those saddlebags. So it's definitely a fun bike to be on. If you guys enjoyed that video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, smash that subscribe button, and I'll see you guys next video.